Welcome back to London Beautiful Life. I'm Rihanna Horner and we're at the Kindling Film Premiere at Curzon Soho. But what was it about this storyline that attracted you and wanted you for you to make a movie out of it? God, so when I was um, 21, my friendship group lost two people close to us. So there was a group of us that sort of really formed tight knits through that. Um, we talked about things deeper than we ever had before. We started telling each other we love each other, sort of realised the fragility to life. So I guess there was a short film first, which that came out of, and then I guess I just didn't feel like I got out of me enough. Um, so the feature felt like it was born out of the need to tell the story further. And then what's been pretty tragic is we've now lost another friend who the film was based on. So it's, I guess it's been like a full circle story, but it's been one of those things where I watch it now, talking about the love I had for my friends, and I still feel it really strongly, so it's a really special personal experience, yeah. So do you want to tell us a bit about the movie to start with? Absolutely. Um, so the film's called Kindling. Uh, it's a positive and uplifting look at how young men deal with grief. Uh, it follows Sid, who um, in his final summer alive, he's dying from terminal testicular cancer. He brings home his four closest friends to basically celebrate what ends up being his, his final summer. Um, and yeah, it's just a beautiful look at max masculinity, uh, friendship, and it's based on true events from uh, writer con director Conor O'Hara. Absolutely. I mean, it's got such an important underlying message, um, raising awareness of testicular cancer. Um, what is it that you want the audience, I suppose, to feel and, and take away from it? The film, for us, Conor's tried to make like the first happy film about death. Uh, when the credits roll, it's definitely a feeling of like bittersweetness. I don't want to give too much away but this is probably one of the first cancer movies that doesn't mention the word cancer um, what we really want to want to do is particularly with our partnership with Movember is show people that testicular cancer is actually the, one of the most curable forms of cancer it's one of the ones that doesn't take as many lives as others do so from showing this film and getting people down there we want people to understand that if they check themselves if we as young men actually speak to each other about these things we might have a chance of catching it so yeah that's a that's a big message for, for me with the film. How do you prepare for a role like this? I mean, it's so emotional. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, how do you mentally prepare yourself for that and emotionally? Uh, I kind of worked with Connor, the writer, to understand the tone that he was trying to achieve. Um, so having conversations with him about the script and about the character to, to set down in concrete the, the kind of... Um, the kind of take he wants um, and then yeah just just to know my character and, 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 to, and to kind of get into that and then and then to bond with with the, with the rest of the lads with, with, with the rest of the five boys so we did a, we did a weekend away in Suffolk where we just played games told stories sat around fires that kind of um, the kind of things you see in the film, really, we, 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 we did that as friends to kind of to understand each other so that the relationships would be like more believable on screen. Did you build a really good close bond with each other? Go on, you answer. We, 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 started, we started building the bond since uh, since a couple of months before, no? Because we were filming we were filming something else at the time, and so we kind of came into this into this already bit of a bond. So we just got to make that stronger and uh, kind of let that tell the story as well. You know? yeah, yeah. So yeah, we was on a we was on The Witcher together. Um, a couple of years ago and then I was down filming no I, yeah I was doing a makeup test for a job and I was staying in a hotel I hadn't spoke to Wilson for ages and I was like oh bro come through let's have a let's chill out and then we both start talking about this project that we're auditioning for that's just got a really good passioned director you know writer director and it turns out that we're, we're auditioning for the same project different characters though so from that point there I said to my agent I was like we need to let them know about this rapport and I I think it, it only helped, didn't it? It only helped, really helped. you know. So, yeah, and w many more projects hopefully to come with both of us together. Yeah. And, and, you know, with the other boys as well, we all connected in our own ways. Not not saying that we was all best friends, because that's not the case, but that's not the case in the film either. It's funny how, like, life sometimes imitates art and vice versa. It was one of the days and weeks where there was a bit of tension in the group. And it was also the week that we were filming scenes that had tension in them. So it was like, did that happen subconsciously or consciously who knows yeah. can you tell us about any big projects that you've got coming up or that you're currently working on yeah so I'm working on my own brand um, Brazilian hair extensions I'm actually wearing my hair so um, yeah I've been working on that it's been a lot of work but hopefully it's gonna be launching very soon so yeah 
really exciting. Where can people find them? Oh, it's going to be online. So, yeah, as soon as it's launched, I'm going to announce it all over my Instagram, do some press releases. So, it'll, yeah, it'll be good. So, tell us, how has your life changed in the past year? I mean, yeah, from, from this year to last year. Do you know what? It's still very much the same. Like, I am a mum, so I'm on the school run in the mornings, and then I'm on the red carpet in the evening. So, it is very weird and so surreal, but I can't complain. I'm loving every single minute of it. And it's just so nice because everyone keeps coming up and saying we loved on The Apprentice so I'm just milking every single last minute I can. What was your most memorable moment there? Do you know what? Probably when we first walked into that boardroom and we got told we were going to Antigua I was, my jaw hit the floor. You literally cannot get that clip back. I was like, what? Antigua? So we've been in isolation in a hotel and I hadn't seen anyone so I just met the candidates. I just literally sat in front of Lord Sugar, Karen and Tip. Well it was Claude. And I was like, we're going to Antigua. So that was such a memorable moment for me. What's it like being in the boardroom? Is it as savage as it looks? Oh, it is so savage. It's literally, nothing's going to prepare you. And I felt like when I was sat there, Lord Sugar would say my name and I'd be like, oh, he wants me to answer. It's the weirdest thing. It's like you're watching the show, but you're supposed to answer back to every question. So you just got to back yourself and you just have to be really confident with what you've done and he likes that he likes he watches it he sees whether you hold yourself accountable and he just goes okay and that's why I think I got to become runner-up so if you weren't here tonight what would you be doing on a Tuesday evening well normally I'd be filming Tawi but obviously we've just finished wrapped with the, we've wrapped for the series we've got a six weeks break and then we go back to filming again which I'm really looking forward to um, I've been on I've been doing Tawi press all day today so yeah just having having the best time ever yeah loving it and what are you going to be doing in your six week break <laughs> so I've got loads of stuff going on, like a bit of like, like business opportunities happening, things that are being discussed. I'm just really looking forward to it. Like this series has been a big series for me and I'm just having the best time ever. So let's wait and see what happens. I've got the next series as well. And then however long time it goes on, I'll be there. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. How do you feel it went, the last series? How are you feeling coming out of it? It's crazy because this series has been a really difficult series for me. Like I've been crying non-stop. I've, been op I've opened up a lot about my like my past and stuff like that. So yeah, like it's been a good, good series for me. But the public are seeing a different side to me, which I'm happy about. Because yes, I am a bitch, but I've also got a heart. So it's nice for people to see that side of me. Yeah, it's good. Are you celebrating King's coronation at all? Oh yeah, no, definitely it's something worth noting. I mean, I think it's always difficult when you when you've lost a monarch uh, like uh, Her Majesty the Queen. It always feels a bit strange when you have a new monarch come in, and after the huge expense of the funeral, you have the huge expense of a, a coronation, and that's always a difficult uh, area to bridge. Uh, but for me, um, I, I think it's uh, I think it's important to mark, mark the new coronation. And we've got to give him a chance to sort of grow into the role. I imagine when Queen Elizabeth came to the throne after her father, everybody felt it was a bit weird. So I imagine it would take a couple of years for people to, to see. But historically, kings who have come into the role late have done very well. So hopefully that will, that will be the case for him. So how did you prepare for your character? Um, well, I spoke to Connor, the director and writer, um, and I watched his his uh, short film, Kindling, which this one was based on, and I loved it. And um, then I read the script, the script, and um, I was so impressed by his writing, his sens sensitivity, the the topic that he's uh, tackling, uh, the depth of his understanding and um, the relationships that he formed in the film. So in terms of preparation, I, um, I was sort of introduced to his world, as, as were all the rest of the cast, in a really good way. We had rehearsal period and we all met each other and we got to know each other quite well. And it was during the sort of little window of opportunity um, in between you know, lockdowns. So we were in a sort of imposed bubble. Um, so in a way that was kind of helpful for this film because uh, it meant that we all had to be together and get to know each other in a particular way. We were very dependent on each other. I play his mum. So um, it was very important that I, that I get to know my son too. Hello, how are you? 
how are you tonight? <laughs> very good, very excited. Yes, excited to see the movie. Well, I've seen it twice already. I'm the executive producer of the film. So <laughs> excited to see it on the big screen. I Yes, it, I'm excited for everyone else to see this film because it is, it's a tearjerker, uh, but it's got a very, very heartfelt story. But at the end of the day, it teaches people how to give hope and how to co collaborate and come together and to support each other through tough times. And you're from Movember. I am. Yeah. So I'm one of their ambassadors. I spent some time speaking to uh, Connor and Jamie and, um, uh, and to George as well about my experiences both with Movember and testicular cancer. So that, ho that helped to kind of inform them on the kind of experiences that you go through, um, the emotions that you feel, the way that you react to other people around you as well. So the friends are trying to be supportive, the family. Sometimes it doesn't always go to plan, but with a lot of good communication or with just good communication, it, it can make such a difference, which is what I think they tried to show in this film and have done really well. So can you tell us any projects that you're working on at the moment? So we've got an album out coming out on the 7th of July, uh, Under Lost Romantic. And then we just released our third single, which is called Waterfalls which has done incredibly well, so we're happy about that. And then uh, we've got a load of UK shows coming up and then plans to tour Europe again. And I think we're gonna probably go and do some writing in LA uh, later on in the year, so yeah. Just living, just living life, bro. Yeah. A lot coming up. A lot coming, coming up, yeah. a lot coming yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. So if you weren't here tonight, what would you be doing on a typical Tuesday evening? Probably playing COD against each other or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, either that. I'm a strange little game. I mean, Freddie would most likely be, you know, other than writing, he'd probably be sending me voice notes of like acoustic guitar, like I'm writing this. And then um, I'll probably be in my studio just recording loads of stuff as well. We've got a load of shows coming up like next week. So we're just, fair, to, we're just trying to yeah. get ready for that and stuff. Yeah, other than a little bit of PlayStation against each other as well. <laughs> so, yeah. When you're not together, you're playing games against each other somehow. That or voice noting. Yeah, that Honestly, voice noting. Honestly, I spend half my time with this guy or voice noting this guy this on guy. WhatsApp yep, every single sure. time. And we, we still haven't had an argument. <laughs> <laughs> What's a day-to-day -day like doing a pantomime? How does that work? Um, and we need more pantomimes just for the family it brings families together children makes everybody happy and don't forget kids are on half they want half term so the, the parents need to need something for them to do so it was a good thing so Wizard of Oz I was Wizard of Oz but before then I did Peter Pan in Starbridge then Lincoln so like a lot but I enjoy it it's fun that's great do you have any more coming up well, hopefully, fingers crossed, I might do. I'm still waiting to hear. I don't know yet, but I'm doing a lot of um, uh, the, the prides now and the festivals and stuff like that. And then, uh, fingers crossed, hopefully I get time to be able to go to Cannes. Yeah, so, yeah, it's kind of cool. How much do you know about, about the movie and, and the, the, sort of the, the message behind it about men speaking out about their, about their health issues? Um, and does that mean a lot to you? Yeah, you know, I think it's very important that, you know, men speak out, you know, when when they go through through, through stuff. Uh, for example, myself, I used to be a, a, a footballer and I know how it is to hold a lot of stuff in, you know, and go through tough times. But you should always have someone you can speak to and everything. I think it's very important. And I'm just glad that we have a movie that will spread awareness to those, those men, women, everyone in the world. You know, to showcase that it's okay for men to speak out on mental health issues. Have you got any big projects coming up at all? Um, yeah, I've got a, uh, a, a thriller uh, coming out, um, I think, later on this year, which is really good fun. Like, I get a shot in the chest, um, like, there's loads of like shooting and stuff, like it was, yeah, it was wicked. It's good fun, yeah. That's intense. How do you prepare for that? <laughs> Just a lot of falling over, really. Yeah, yeah. No, it's good. It's really good fun. It's like uh, trust, trust funds and shotguns. I, I define it as. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a thriller called. Uh, yeah, so I'm excited. You both look great. Thank you. Do you, you. <laughs> thank you. Do you always uh, do you plan what you're wearing with each other? Yeah. Most days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We like to, like, especially for events like this. You know, I'd rather be overdressed than underdressed. So I said, Henry, we're putting on the bow ties. The suede's coming out, and I feel like we're, we're dressed for the right occasion, right? It's a red carpet. You can't be underdressed. No, that's absolutely for sure. I, I couldn't agree more. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, have you got any big projects coming up at all? So, yes, uh, it, 
In, in short, Henry and I are identical twins. We do a lot of uh, fashion, lifestyle content. Uh, we, 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 yeah, we do, we've got loads coming up. We do a lot of acting stuff as well. So we've got some exciting projects coming out this year. Nothing we can talk about too much yet, but we've got some cool things coming up. Have you always been as close as you are? So we've um, known each other and been in the, well, we were, we were in the same womb as each other for nine months. So yeah, we've never really grown apart. We're best friends, best friends and worst enemies. That's what we like to call it. But uh, yeah, we got well. We know how to wind each other up, but we also know how to respect each other and give each other our boundaries when we need it as well. So yeah, yeah we get we get on well. We get on well. Obviously tonight, uh, the movie's got a big message about men's health um, and about talking about health. Uh, what what does that mean to you to be here tonight? Yeah, I think it's a conversation that really needs to be had. It's something I don't think a lot of people want to discuss and want to open up about, but I think stuff like this really encourages more and more people to speak openly about their mental health, and I think that's only a good thing, to be honest. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to watching it.